ladies, it is Tiffany of Clarity, Confidence, Courage, Women's Empowerment, and I'm super excited to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and that is sleep. Because ladies, let me tell you, this week I had to stop drinking coffee because I was not getting enough sleep, and I didn't even realize that was the issue. But anyway, we're going to be talking about that and so much more because sleep helps make you feel better. It does so many things when you can get enough sleep and it definitely helps boost your confidence and your self-esteem to take on the day. So before we jump into that content, make sure that you share, like, and subscribe to this video and give me that thumbs up. Let other women know about this channel so that they can also start getting on the path to living the life that they love. All right, ladies, let's go. Now, as I was telling you at the intro of the video, I literally had to stop drinking coffee this week. And ladies, let me tell you, I love coffee. I love it so much. I love drinking that coffee, holding the cup in my hands, feeling the high of the caffeine. I mean, it's a whole process, right? But I was noticing that at night I would, you know, try to go to sleep and I wasn't falling asleep very quickly. And then I wake up the next day and I'm kind of tired. I, it's almost like I didn't get enough sleep and I'll wake up in the middle of the night, which is not unusual for me. But I have never been a person that has had issues going to sleep. And certainly I'm not a person that constantly always wakes up in the middle of the night. In any case, I thought to myself, looking at a few YouTube videos about caffeine and how it can affect your sleep. And I thought, you know what, let me cut off the coffee and see if that helps. Because I was having coffee in the morning, in the afternoon, a little bit around two o'clock. I mean, it was starting to get ridiculous. But the reason I wanted to do this video is because just like me, I know there's many of you who are watching who may be having issues with your sleep. But here's the connection between sleep, confidence, and self-esteem. When you don't get enough sleep, you start to feel drained. You see, when you're feeling, as when you're actually asleep, that's the time that your body takes to repair itself, to help grow your hair, your nails, to shed old skin, to help your bones grow, to really help do so many things to function. And you're fasting when you're asleep. So of course it's detoxing your cells. So there's so many important things that are going on in your body when you sleep. And of course, all the food that you ate, all the nutrients and minerals are, are being able to be transported to where they're supposed to be because the body has shut down. You are in a coma-like state and you're not up moving around, you're not eating, you're not doing stuff. So it finally has time to repair. Here's the thing, when you wake up ladies and you've had enough sleep, you're going to feel revitalized. You're going to have that natural energy that you're supposed to have to make it through the day. And that's when feeling good and being able to think clearly comes into play, which of course leads to having a great day, which of course leads to you feeling great and confident, right? However, on the flip side, when you don't get enough sleep, your energy is low, you're lethargic, you're grumpy, you're probably in a bad attitude, you're annoyed at every little thing, you probably don't feel that great. So it's hard to take on the day when you haven't gotten enough sleep. In any case, ladies, that is why sleep is so important. Now research shows that over the age of about 18 years old, most people need about seven to nine hours of sleep. And there's a reason for that range. And the reason is because everyone is different when it comes to health, what they're eating, the underlying you know, conditions they may have, such as chronic disease. So all of that can affect the amount of time that you sleep. Now, of course, you have your exceptions where people get six hours of deep REM sleep and they're perfectly fine. But notice I said six hours of deep REM sleep. If you're not even getting the deep sleep in that six hours, you're still gonna probably wake up tired. So I wanted to really talk about the different things that might be holding you back from getting the best sleep possible so that you can wake up, energize and revitalize and take on the world. So here's number one. The first thing that might be holding you back from getting the sleep you need is because you don't have a sleeping schedule. Your schedule is all over the place. Sometimes you go to bed at nine, sometimes 11, sometimes two o'clock in the morning. Trust me, ladies, I've been there. When I used to work in corporate because of all the projects I was on, sometimes I'd be able to get a bed, into bed at 10 o'clock. But a lot of times, even on the weekends, if I was working, I wouldn't go to bed to three o'clock in the morning because I was I had a deadline, I had a project to work on. But the moment I made a decision, you know what? 
My sleep is so important that I am going to make sure I try to at least go to bed at the same time. That is when I start to at least feel a little better and I notice a difference. The best thing you can do for yourself is to have a time frame where you normally go to sleep. For some people that might be 8 p.m., that might be 9 p.m., that might be 10 p.m., but the idea is that you're getting in that at least seven to nine hours in that time frame of when you sleep. So depending on what time you go to bed, it, it doesn't really matter what the time is, but keep that time the same. And if you can, even on the weekends, if you can keep your normal sleep schedule on the weekends and throughout the week, you're going to notice a difference and your body is gonna get accustomed, it's gonna get in the habit of getting sleepy at that time. The second thing that may be holding you back from getting great sleep is that you don't have a pre-bed routine. See, when I talk about a pre-bed routine, it's this idea of a little routine leading up to going to sleep to help relax you, whether that's taking a nice bath with lavenders or lighting a candle or drinking some hot tea or even turning the lights down a little bit low to let your body know, okay, we're, we're getting ready for bed. We're about to go to sleep. But the whole point of a pre-bed routine is to relax you and to get you in the mood <laughs> to actually lay down and go to sleep, right? So it's training your body to know that when you start this particular routine or activity that you are about to get ready to go to bed. So it's time to start getting drowsy and it's time to start getting ready to go to sleep. The third reason is that you may have an old mattress that you just need to get rid of. You need to make sure that you check your mattress every so often and see if it's time for you to get a new mattress. And if that's the case, then ladies, if you can get a new mattress. Now, if you're in a situation where you're like, Denise, I don't have the money right now to spend on getting a new mattress. Well, there are tons of mattress pads that you can put on your bed to make it a little bit more cushiony or a little bit more firm, depending on what you enjoy in order for you to get a better sleep. But yes, your mattress does count. Now, the fourth reason, just like I told you at the beginning of the video, you need to cut the caffeine down. Now, for me, I had to just cut it out for a while. I'm not saying I'm gonna give up coffee forever, but I'm probably gonna do this for the next 30 days to see if it has a big impact. And I suggest you do the same. See if taking out caffeine in your daily diet helps you get better sleep at night. And if you say, well, Tiffany, I can't <laughs> give up my coffee for a long period of time, then at least cut it off at about 11 a.m., 12 o'clock noon. They say coffee, caffeine actually stays in your system for a good six hours after you drink it probably actually more than that. So it's important for you to go ahead, have a cutoff time. So by the time that you get ready to go to bed, that caffeine has worn off. It has you know, left your body and you're able to actually lay down and get a good night's rest. The last and final reason it might be because you are not shutting down your electronics before you go to bed. And when I say shutting down your electronics, I mean your phone, you know, television, just anything that has a blue light and is keeping you going, your computer screen. Half an hour is kind of about the range, an hour to a half an hour before you go to bed. You need to shut all that stuff off. They say that the blue light that comes from our telephones, it comes from our computer screens, it comes from our television, actually affects our brain waves because the brain is not accustomed to that type of light. It's not natural. If you think back to our grandparents, as soon as the sun went down, they were getting ready for bed and they went right to sleep. Well, the fact that we have so much technology is awesome, but it also has interrupted our natural sleep patterns and our body no longer knows when it should go to sleep at appropriate times because that blue light is affecting the brain. So it's so important that you shut down all of your electronics and allow your brain to slowly start to shut down as well so that you can lay down and get a good night's sleep. So those were the five reasons of why you may not be sleeping well and how you can reverse that and actually start to sleep better at night. I'm already doing one and I probably need to work on the other ones, but I'm going to get there. Okay. <laughs> So let me know in the comments if you are doing one of the things I propose in order to help yourself get better sleep. 
Trust me, ladies, when I tell you that getting sleep is going to help you feel better. And it's definitely going to help boost your confidence and make you feel more empowered to take on your day. All right. As always, make sure to share, like, and subscribe to this channel. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Facebook, my private Facebook group, as well as LinkedIn. All the links are below. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.